I just want to celebrate another game they're winning. I just want to celebrate. Sens win 4-3 in overtime over the Edmonton Oilers. And just like that, the Sens have won three of their last five games, marking the second time in just over a month they've been able to accomplish that. But I, for one, am not overly excited about the streak, because after winning three of five last time, they immediately went out and lost seven in a row. In fact, in between winning three of five in February and winning three of five in March, the Sens went one, ten, and one. Not exactly a stretch that's gonna make you confident that they can keep it up this time. Hopefully they can, but as always, let's kick things off with lineup changes. And after a bunch against the Flames on Thursday, there were a bunch yesterday against the Oilers. Vitaly Abramov and Philip Chalapic were returned to Belleville, but Eric Brandstrom stayed with the big club in case a defenseman was sick and couldn't play. Eric Brandstrom did not end up playing though, as the Sens got some good news on the blue line, with each of their sick blue liners able to play, and Thomas Shabbat ready to return. While Eric Brandstrom was the lone healthy scratch on the blue line, he was not the only Sens defenseman not to play last night, as Cody Ceci continues to recover from an upper body injury. Up front, with Chalapic and Abramoff returned to Belleville, the Sens had some holes to fill in their lineup, and did so by inserting Jean-Gabriel Pajot back into the lineup, after his one game suspension, and Colin White back in the lineup after he was out with an injury. Chris Tierney also returned to the lineup after missing the game in Calgary on Thursday with an illness, and to make room for Tierney, the Sens scratched Zach Smith, who dealt with a bit of a back injury. So up front, Abramoff, Chlapik, and Smith are out, Tierney, White, and Pajot are in. On defense, Shabbat's in, and Branstrom's out. In goal, Andy gets the start. The start's a bit of a big one for Andy, as he's got a personal two-game winning streak in Edmonton and was the site of one of his most famous shutouts. That game came in the fall of 2016. Andy had left the Sens to be at home with his wife Nicole following a cancer diagnosis. He rejoined the team for that game in Edmonton after the Sens had some goalie issues and then left the team again following that shutout. It was a very emotional night. And with Andy currently on a lengthy losing streak that hasn't seen him pick up a win in 2019, this game could be a big game for his confidence moving forward. Not only that, but it wouldn't be all that bad to be able to snap that streak either. And in the early going, the Sens come out flying and look to get Andy that elusive victory. Just over four and a half minutes into the first period, Milan Lucic gets sent off to the box for holding, and the Sens take advantage. Christian Willandon has the puck at the blue line, he fires a shot on goal, it misses the net, Brady Kachuk picks it up behind the net, tries to center it in front, bounces off Adam Larson, then off Mikko Koskinen, goes in, and the Sens lead 1-0. That was lucky, but I'll take it. And I'm sure Brady will too. That's his 18th of the season, and gives the Sens an early cushion. Unfortunately, it doesn't take long for a former Sen to tie the score. Not even four minutes after Brady Kachuk makes it 1-0, Darnell Nurse picks up the puck in his own zone, hits Alex Chase on a stretch pass, he races in all alone, pulls the puck to his backhand, fires one by Andy, and it's 1-1. Is anybody paying any attention? I mean, the Sens were caught changing, had two guys back, Nobody watched Chase on. He got a breakaway and got a free goal. Man, this defense drives me nuts. Thankfully, the Sens weren't going to let that be the end of them, responded with a goal of their own, and regained the lead. With less than five minutes left in the first period, Bobby Ryan does it all himself and gives the Sens a 2-1 lead. It starts with Bobby drawing a penalty and ends with Bobby getting a goal. And remember when I ranted in the Vancouver video about the league having a blatant bias against the Sens? Well, here we are, two games later, a blatant example of the league having blatant bias against the Sens. Darnell Nurse gets sent to the box for high-sticking Bobby Ryan. Ryan goes to the bench to clean out his mouth, which is full of blood. TSN puts two minutes on the penalty clock. I think, uh-uh, TSN, Bobby's clearly bleeding in his mouth. That's four minutes. Then Gord Miller comes on and goes... That's a two minute penalty? And I go, that's a two minute penalty? Yep, apparently making somebody bleed is a two minute penalty now. The first and only time in NHL history I have ever seen somebody draw blood and only get two minutes for it. This is straight from the NHL rulebook and outlines exactly what a double minor for high sticking is supposed to be. It reads as follows. When a player carries or holds any part of his stick above the shoulders of the opponent so that injury results. 
The referee shall assess a double minor penalty for all contact that causes an injury, whether accidental or careless, in the opinion of the referee. So in every NHL game I've ever seen, when somebody starts bleeding, the NHL determines that an injury has been caused. But in this game, when bleeding occurred, the referee determined that wasn't grounds for an injury? Only in Sens games. Fortunately, late in the power play, Bobby gets his revenge. Ryan does an incredible job to keep the puck into the blue line, then does a fantastic job to keep it from going outside the line. He feeds White, who drops it for Shabbat, who wheels down the wall, sends it in front. Guess who's there? It's Bobby. He tips one by Koskinen, and the Sens lead 2-1. Draws the penalty, knocks the puck down, keeps it in, goes hard to the net, gets the goal. What an incredible sequence from Bobby. And welcome back Shabbat. What a terrific pass. The Sens lead 2-1, and things are going well for a change. Andy and the Sens keep things right where they are through the rest of the period, and we get to the end of the first with the Sens in front 2-1. Unfortunately, early in the second, the Sens fall asleep, and the Oilers' top line makes them pay. McDavid picks up the puck in the neutral zone, deeks out Pyarvi, he and Dreisaitl race in 2-on-1, McDavid, Dreisaitl, McDavid, goal. Andy and Yarosh have no chance to stop the talented duo, and just like that, we're tied at two. I mean, that's just too good. But at the same time, there's just not enough awareness when they're on the ice. But it's not surprising. Ottawa's been like that against the top players all season long. Fortunately, the Sens don't fall asleep again. And despite both teams trying to find the go-ahead goal, neither can find it. And we head to the third tied at two. Both teams press for the early go-ahead goal, neither can find it, and then all of a sudden, in a one-minute span, we have two goals. Just over seven and a half minutes into the third period, Oscar Lindbergh hits Brian Gibbons on a stretch pass, he hits Pyarvi with a pass, they race in two-on-one, Pyarvi feeds Gibbons, he bangs one by Koskinen, and the Sens lead 3-2. And that goal is Gibbons' fourth in 13 games since joining the Sens. Talk about a guy trying to earn a contract for next season. And speaking of a guy trying to earn a contract for next season, what a pass from Magnus Pyarvi. That's a big time goal, and has the Sens ahead with just over 10 minutes left. Unfortunately, nap time would come again, and 57 seconds later, the Oilers score the tying goal. The Oilers dump the puck in, the Sens do a terrible job of trying to get it back, Gambardella feeds Cave, he risks one over Anderson, and we're tied at three. This goal was so frustrating. It wasn't like a minor breakdown. Basically, from the second the puck dropped after Ottawa took the lead, it looked like they didn't want the lead. Because for the next minute, the Oilers absolutely ran their show and finally got the goal. It's just a terrible way of following up a goal. Do you want to win or not? Because if you do, that next shift after a goal is huge. You didn't execute it on this one, and now we're tied again. Thankfully... The Sens are able to hold the fort from there, and we get to overtime, tied at three. The Oilers have some excellent chances at one end, can't score, then Craig Anderson pokes the puck off Dreisaitl, Brady Kachuk picks it up, he and Balsers reach back the other way, two on one, Kachuk waits, fires it, it gets by Koskinen, trickles over the goal line, and the Sens win at 4-3 in overtime. A squeaker, but that's Kachuk's 19th of the season, gives the Sens the win, and finally snaps Andy's lengthy losing streak. And what a perfect way for Andy to end the streak. He gets his second assist of the season on the goal. That's Kachuk's 19th of the year, and the Sens win at 4-3 in overtime. And not only does the win snap Andy's losing streak, it snaps the Sens' own losing streak after losing five straight on the road prior to the win over the Oilers. And in the process, severely dent the Oilers' chances of making the playoffs. And with seven games left, the Sens have a mini streak. Hopefully, this isn't their last win of the season. Now, for good news, bad news. The Sens special teams were excellent last night, and that is the good news. The Sens had two power plays last night, both in the first period, and they scored on both. One was a bit of a fluke, as Brady was dumping it in front, but the other one was an excellent play by Bobby to go to the net. Just look at the first period. Ottawa has two power play chances, they score on both, both of their goals in the period came on said power plays, and they took a 2-1 lead after the first period. It was a perfect way to start. 
Then in the third period, with the game tied, Christian Yarosh gets sent to the box, and the Sens kill off that power play. There were three special teams chances last night. Two for the Sens, one for the Oilers, the Sens were perfect on theirs, and perfect on the penalty kill. That's a perfect three for three night for Ottawa special teams. Ottawa special teams were able to key them to big goals and big kills and able to lead them to a win, and that is the good news. Now, for the bad news. Ottawa wasn't able to follow up their goals with enough good shifts in a row, and that is the bad news. When Ottawa scored to make it 1-0, the Oilers scored less than four minutes later to tie the game. When Ottawa took a 2-1 lead, Edmonton scored about seven and a half minutes later to tie the game. When Ottawa took a 3-2 lead, it was 57 seconds later the Oilers tied the game. It's a problem that's been plaguing them all season, and it was a big reason why they went to overtime last night. Even if you leave the first and the second goal out, all they need to do is be more consistent on the few shifts after the third goal, and they get away with a win. Ottawa wasn't able to do that last night, and that is the bad news. Next up, the Sens return home from their Western Canadian swing when they welcome the Buffalo Sabres to the Canadian Tire Centre on Tuesday evening. That contest will be the third of four meetings on the season between the two teams, and their first since the first week of November. Coming into the contest, the two teams have split the season series so far this season, with Ottawa winning 4-2 in Ottawa on November 1st, and Buffalo winning 9-2 in Buffalo on November 3rd. Since then, the Sabres have been both ice cold and red hot. The Sabres went on to win 10 games in a row after that, and climbed well into the top of the NHL standings, and have gone ice cold since then, and have plummeted back down the standings. After that lengthy winning streak saw the Sabres climb to near the top of the league standings, they have plummeted to 26th now and are 16 points out of a playoff spot. Lately, it really hasn't been good for Buffalo either, as they've lost 9 of their last 10 games. They also come into that contest having to play in New Jersey on Monday before traveling to play in Ottawa on Tuesday. That means Ottawa has a significant energy advantage and they better be ready to take advantage. If Ottawa hopes to climb into last place, and they're still four points behind second last LA, they need to pick up a win against Buffalo, and they need to come out with a strong effort. See you Tuesday night.